Hello friends, welcome back to help. This time we're going to be talking about bases that are constantly running out of power and how to reverse those tides if this starts to happen. Like I'll usually say with these help videos, um, I've been in these exact same situations before so I know really what this feels like and um, it doesn't feel great to lose your run to uh, running out of power for sure because it cascades into pretty much everything else like your oxygen, your food, all that stuff. Um, so, I'm going to talk about three different ways to get yourself back on track here and avoid falling into these traps in the first place. So, let's get it going. Okay, like the slide said, um, it's really easy to fall into a trap in this game of using way too much power and not being aware that you're doing it. Um, I've been in this situation many times and uh, been in the situation where I've run out of coal There's not a whole lot more for me to do and the base is on a clock right now If I go any further with this, I'm probably eventually gonna die uh, So we want to figure out how to get this stabilized if we're in this situation And one of the first things that everybody does is make these coal generators, which are good But there's some other caveats to this uh, For one coal is not an infinite resource uh, for the time being we could go mine some coal out here. Let me turn off my sandbox stuff. We could go mine some coal out if we wanted to and at least keep that going for the time being, but that's not going to sustain us forever. And really, if you're at this stage and you haven't gotten your second power type up, which is usually natural gas, and you're already running out of power, that's probably meaning that you're moving too fast in some other areas as well. So at a glance in this base, um, if you've been playing this game for a long time, you might look at this and be like, oh man, why would you have all this stuff going by this point in the game too? But if you're new to the game, that's not very obvious. So let's start running through some of the systems that I have here that I really don't need yet and that are consuming a ton of my power. In the meantime though, I'm just going to set up a handful of things because we're assuming that this is a realistic base. So I'm going to set up some manual generators here just to make sure that we can at least keep the power on for the time being. Again, this is a bad situation to be in, but once we're in this situation, we just kind of want to fix it and do our best going forward. Uh, and then we'll get all this stuff stabilized as we go. I'm going to keep my sandbox and everything off to kind of simulate what it would be like to do this with uh, duplicates anyway. So. I'm going to add some manual generators here. Uh, we'll just get some duplicates running on these, so at least we don't run out of oxygen while this is going on. Then we will take a close look at all the power that we're using and get rid of all the stuff that we don't need. I definitely don't want to ever be in this situation uh, with all this stuff, so... Alright. While my duplicates get this built, let's go ahead and take a look at all the stuff that we're using incorrectly by this phase of the game. So number one, I have a metal refinery right now. And the metal refinery is a good building to have, but this is definitely not a building that you're going to want with only one type of power producing for you right now. Um, this is going to be very useful to get yourself like steel and refined metals and stuff like that. But until you're ready, I would not use this building um, and continue to rely on your rock crusher for your first few rounds of metal so that you don't fall into that trap. Because we don't need a metal refinery, you may have had some other buildings like these aqua tuners or something that you were using to cool the liquid that was coming out of this because it's going to come out very hot and you'll wind up with a very hot base if you're not careful. So uh, that no longer necessitates these two things either. So we could get rid of those aqua tuners. Aqua tuners are something you really don't want to have until you have like three or four different power sources in your base. Same thing with this. This is a jukebox, uh, jukebot, whatever. So your duplicates can get a little bit of extra morale, but that's just kind of a waste of power throughout the entire game. So if you have any recreational buildings that are using up a lot of power, you can get rid of those. If you have any lights and stuff, not everything needs to be lit. I will typically only use lights for my food. So if you have anything else that's lit, you can get rid of that too. So I'm going to start marking these for destroy. Same thing with food. Um, if you have too much food by this point, you might just want to back off on your production rather than paying the power cost of keeping so many refrigerators running. So, uh, he has the old, uh, crank call, right? Probably sound like a boomer right now with your whole, like, uh, uh is your refrigerator running? Oh, huh? you better go catch it. Uh, yeah, anyway. So, get rid of anything that you might not need. And excess power usage on too much food is definitely a problem as well. You still want at least one refrigerator so you can keep your food out for longer. 
Make sure to also cook it so it lasts for longer too, which most of those recipes will do. Finally, uh, before we get to some of the bigger issues, this is also an air filtration method that I used to use way back in the day uh, before I really knew a lot of more complicated things. And you might be using these too, and these are a big problem, even though they don't look like it. Um, so basically what I have here is down at the bottom of my base, I have a uh, gas pump that is going to be getting rid of all the carbon dioxide and junk in my base that I don't want. This, on its own, is good, but this stuff is not, because every single time I suck up a gas, especially one that is not carbon dioxide or something like that, what am I doing? Uh, it's going to pass through all these filters, and every single one of these filters takes 120 watts to operate. And that is totally unnecessary by this point in the game. Um, I will show you a much better filtration method if you, like, you're going to have to get on this, and this is a good idea, but uh, there's a better way to do this. Also, if you're using carbon skimmers, they're not horrible for power consumption, but there is a better option. So, let's undo this and rebuild all of it really quickly. For your power or your carbon skimmer, um, this is something that I have seen before. You'll basically just like make a room to get rid of all the carbon dioxide as you pump it out, because there might be some other junk in here too, like chlorine or natural gas that got in here from like your duplicates farting all over the place. So that's definitely possible. So yeah. Um, we, did, we do still want to filter this, but I'll show you a much better way to do it. First of all, by this point in the game, if you're not already digging up and getting close to hitting the top of the map, you want to start doing that because that's the best place to vent any gases that you don't want. If you can't get up there quickly enough and you're still having a carbon dioxide problem, you can just start putting a bunch of this stuff... Oh, I need to get the research for it. One second. Let's get the research for... Uh, uh, for gas reservoirs, because if you don't have anywhere to put it right now, you might as well just put it somewhere uh, that makes sense and kind of out of the way, and you can use it later if you want to. So, for what the? Oh, I guess I just didn't get it immediately. So, for anything like this, if you need to get rid of your carbon dioxide or just store it, you can't just throw it down into here. These are minor details compared to everything else, for what it's worth. I just wanted to mention that. Getting out into space and being able to vent the gases you don't want into space is a good start. So, for this, um, I'm going to destroy all the other pipes that I have in the way. I'm just going to use my quicker tools here, just so we don't have to sit and wait for as long. We were sending polluted oxygen here. We don't need to worry too much about that. And let's separate the rest of this out. Maybe we do want to keep chlorine. So, if I do wind up sucking up any gas, I, mean, I still need to fil filter it, but I don't want to use the same buildings. So I'm just going to draw a pipe that goes straight like this. Eventually I will want this to go all the way out into space and vent the stuff that I don't want. Namely the natural gas, or not natural gas, the carbon dioxide and stuff like that. We're not that far yet, so we're just going to pretend like we are instead going to be sending it over into these uh, tanks. So I'm just going to send them down into these tanks. These are just basically all the gases that I don't want, and I'll continue to collect these. Uh, eventually we will get rid of everything else. So, uh, the way that I can do this now is if I want to filter something out, let's say we want something specific, let's, let's say a tank of chlorine or something like that, which is useful. Instead of using our gas filters, I'm going to use a gas shutoff, and on the line that we have pumping into these tanks, I'm just going to put a gas shutoff here that has the white part touching the pipe, like that. And then on the space before that, I'm going to hook up a gas pipe element sensor. This is going to detect what type of gas is passing through these pipes, so that if it is the gas that I want to filter out, I can just put it here. Then, we just need to connect the output of the gas filter onto there. Or sorry, the gas shutoff. Let me turn off my cheats here so my duplicates have to keep building. Then, all we need to do is connect it up by wire, uh, automation wire that is, and then we need to set what type of gas we're looking for. So if I only want chlorine to go into this tank, I want to set up this element filter, or sorry, element sensor, for chlorine. If that's if it does hit chlorine on its way, it will be intercepted and it'll get sent into this pipe. The other way I can have this limiting power is I don't want this running all the time because eventually there's going to be oxygen and gases that I want down here. And there's no reason for me to pump them out and get rid of them. So we need to put this on some kind of automation too. And since the natural resting point of gases is chlorine's here, carbon dioxide's lower, oxygen's higher, Natural gas is kind of somewhere in the middle, that kind of stuff. 
I basically just want to get rid of all this stuff until it eventually is just all oxygen in my base. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to set up a another thing of research that I need. Uh, let's just pretend we got that research. I'll just turn on my cheats here really quickly. So let's say we did have that research for a gas element sensor. I'm going to hook up a gas element sensor just a couple of tiles above my pump like this. And then I'm going to add some automation in between that's just going to be a filter gate. This is basically a gate that will make sure that this needs to stay on for a certain amount of time before it will allow this to turn on. So I'll just kind of have it starting here. It'll point downward and go into the pump. And then I only want this to be pumping if it is something other than oxygen. So you could do this a couple ways. You could do it, the easiest way is if there is carbon dioxide right here, then I want to pump it out. You may eventually get chlorine and natural gas buildup and stuff like that. So you could also do this a different way, which would be like this. If we disconnect that from its automation and we use a not gate, set up the not gate like this, then we can connect it like so and basically just say, turn the pump on if I detect anything other than oxygen. So now, if this is detecting anything other than oxygen, and we can set this for a longer amount, let's say like, wait 40 seconds to turn this on to prove that there's something other than oxygen in here before it finally turns on. And then, we should be good. You're using way less power to do the exact same thing, and you can kind of daisy chain these uh, gas shutoffs together. So if I wanted another filtration system, I build the exact same thing as this, just right here also. So yeah, that's another big way that you could save on power, and I did want to mention those gas filters, because those types of filters are very expensive to run. The other thing to check around here, let's check around for a couple more things we need to fix. For one, we're using jumbo batteries and not smart batteries. Uh, that's a big problem. Let's get rid of these. Um, I will have my duplicates do these jobs so that they can get that done. The jumbo batteries are pretty tempting because they seem like something that's going to be uh, useful. They hold the most power, that kind of stuff. But I also want to uh, make sure that these coal generators aren't running all the time. You might burn through all of your coal because you wound up using it all because nothing was telling you to stop. So let's go ahead and get some uh, smart batteries in here. So smart batteries do require a little bit of refined metal. But once you get that in, you can then run an automation wire to all of your generators. And your generators will only run when you actually need power. It's kind of the same way as the manual generators. Your duplicates are only going to use them if you actually have a need for power right now. This is the way that you tell your automated generators to do the same thing. Only turn on if I actually do need power. Finally, if you have any other stuff like this, like algae distillers, we'll get to this when our duplicants can build it, so as soon as they get there. You might notice I have really bad productivity levels right now because my duplicants are too busy spending all their time building, uh, or sorry, running on these wheels to generate power and running coal back and forth and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be a problem. If you have any other stuff like this, like this is going to be distilling my slime down into algae. I don't necessarily need that right now. I can find other means of oxygen production. I have a good amount of algae. I could use this to gas off into oxygen for a little while, which is use way less power. Um, I also don't necessarily need to be refining my water right now. Like, I should have a decent amount of water still built up that I can use for the time being, so I don't need to start worrying about cleaning my water in mass. So any random ancillary systems you can think of to get rid of, that's the biggest point of advice I would give to start off. For the smart battery, uh, you probably just want to set these numbers to something like 80-20. That'll mean when this is at 20%, it turns on, it allows these generators to run. When it gets up to 80%, it turns back off. By this point, if we're able to find a little bit more coal out on the map, this will actually keep us running for a little while longer. But this is not the solution that's going to carry us through the longer parts of the game. We definitely need to increase our coal production and we will need other power sources, so I'm going to talk about that next. Alrighty, like I mentioned a couple times already, there is still a lot of natural coal that spawns out on the map, so in the meantime you might as well go grab it if you can get it, especially if you're in kind of a dire situation. But, this coal is eventually going to run out, like there's not infinity coal on the map. However, there's way more of other materials on the map, like sandstone, sedimentary rock, granite, all kinds of stuff like that, that we can turn into coal. 
Um, so let's start talking about how we're going to do that. Also, because we have our smart battery up, because we have more coal reserves on hand, we can get rid of these na these manual generators, so our duplicates are spending time doing things that are more important instead of running on these wheels to generate power. So, uh, let's talk about how we're going to get more coal. So if you see these hatches, they're probably buried in the ground here. Yeah, here they are. You see these hatches? I'm going to click on one. If you take a look at this, whoa. Basically says, hatches excrete solid coal as waste and may be uncovered by digging up buried objects. Basically, they're going to eat all these kinds of different things and turn it into coal. And there's a way that we can take advantage of that rather than just kind of waiting for them to put coal out every once in a while. So what I'm going to do is first make sure my cheats are turned off so that my duplicates have to do this work. I'm going to build a couple of rooms here. You could build up to, I'd say maybe three is okay. You're going to have a hard time finding enough hatches to fill that initially. I'll usually build two, but for the sake of it, and because we're in kind of a bad spot, let's build three. So I'm going to build three rooms here that are going to be where I start ranching hatches. And uh, they're just going to be about 96 tiles in size. This is the maximum size you can get to still be a stable so that you can groom your hatches. And you'll want to groom your hatches so that they produce coal faster. So I'll do something like this. Um debating whether I'm going to talk about shipping this or not. Let's, uh, maybe I'll cover it. I don't know. In each of these rooms, we'll want to put in a grooming station so that we have a place to groom these hatches that we find. And we will also want a critter drop off so that we can take hatches here over time. Finally, they're going to need some kind of food source most of the time. And just to get us started, I'm going to put in a few storage bins. We'll set up some shipping here in just a second. Uh, I did decide to do the shipping, by the way, because it's, it's probably going to be necessary for this. So, for these hatches, if your room is 96 tiles large, that means it can hold 8 hatches at max. So on our uh, critter drop-off, I'm just going to want to set this to hold 8 of these hatches, like that. Put this maybe up a little bit higher. We also want to make sure that we have a duplicate that is capable of ranching right now. Looks like we don't have anybody. Uh, but again, this is like a test run-through. Um, these are all brand new dupes. You wouldn't normally be in this situation. You probably have more skills. So I'm just going to assign a few of them really quickly, just for the sake of it. I feel like I have to justify all my options here. Okay, we have a hand handful of people that can ranch hatches. I'll set all these to be able to hold eight hatches at a time. And then I'm just going to only feed them sandstone and sedimentary rock. So if I just set this to accept sandstone and sedimentary rock in a pretty large amount, this will at least hold me over for the time being. Right now, we already have... Oh, this hasn't been closed off. I was like, we don't have seven hatches. What is this? Uh, we already have, I think, one or maybe two hatches in here right now. Yeah, there's one. Let's try to get a bunch more out on the map. There's one right here that we could grab. So we'll do that. Uh, there's probably some around here. They're kind of hard to find sometimes. See, there's a bunch of them down here in the floor. I might need to go dig them out uh, to get them up here so that I can uh, put them into my stables. There's one here. Looks like there's some more buried in the ground. Where's more? Hmm. Well, we'll see if we can find some more, and if not, then that's also fine. By this point, you would hopefully uh, have already wrangled a handful of them and put them in the rooms here. We do need to finish these doors before we can actually put them in here, though, so let's get those done. My duplicates are dropping off the sandstone and sedimentary rock. Once they do, just deconstruct this so they don't waste time continuing to bring this up here. Actually, I'll want to wait until they're all filled. Otherwise, they're just going to take the piles from here and move them there. That doesn't really accomplish much. So, duplicates should be out grabbing hatches here in just a minute. I'll have them dig out these other areas to go grab hatches. And yeah, that will be a way that you can start producing coal to effectively... It doesn't really make it renewable, but it does keep it flowing, um, at least for a long time in the game. And this is something that's very common, just to keep your coal uh, power running for this long. Now that these are all full, I'll delete them. Here's Mima brushing the face of a hatch just to make it happy, so there you go. So yeah, while we get this going, let's talk about a shipping system, um, which I've talked about a few times in some other videos. But here is going to be kind of important to set this up, so you'll want to make sure you refine a good amount of metal first. But basically the idea with these hatches is once you get more than eight, or if you get eggs in here, the hatches won't be nearly as happy and they won't produce nearly as much of the stuff that you want. So you want to make sure you have something to ship out anything that you don't want here. So in this case, 
I'm just gonna ship out the eggs so that they get out of this room. And I'm gonna also ship out the coal somewhere so that these can be automatically loaded. This is not normally how you would set up an entire shipping system, by the way. Um, I'm using steel here where I normally wouldn't. I'm just trying to hurry up for the sake of the video. Probably want a different type of refined metal here. It's pretty wasteful to use steel on that, but anyway. Um, so I would normally set up a shipping system that's a lot different than this. But just for the sake of the video, let's say that we uh, set up something like this to ship things out. Gonna need an auto sweeper and conveyor loaders to all be able to reach each other so that they can load the stuff that they uh, pick up into these things. And then I want to send all this stuff over to a central point to be sorted. Whoops. I'm trying to go too fast. So if we were to drop it off, say, right here. Um, this would not scale well over the course of the game, but this is just for example. Let's say we drop it off right here. We're going to put another auto sweeper and conveyor loader down so that any coal that we get, we can just send straight down to our coal generators, and then my duplicates won't even have to touch this anymore. It'll just automatically load itself over time. So, once they get all this stuff set up, all you need to do is set up what type of materials are going to be shipped out on this, which is going to be everything except for sandstone and sedimentary rock. Let me give my duplicates a second to catch up, and I'll just kind of uh, fast forward. Okay. Duplicates have caught up. Let's set up our filters on what's going to be shipped out of it, all these areas. So I want to ship everything out of here except for the stuff that they're going to eat. So they're going to be eating the sandstone and sedimentary rock. Then I can just copy the settings on everything else. And there we go. My auto supers will start loading everything that is not sandstone and sedimentary rock and get it out of here. It'll also include any eggs that will uh, cause problems with these other hatches too. Uh, like, if there's too much stuff in here, they won't want to eat as much anymore, they won't produce as much coal, whatever. So it'll get the eggs out of there, and they'll be much happier with that. Also, the thing you can do with your shipping system, first of all, we need to send our coal down to the right spot, so I've got that set up. It's going to be going right down here. So if we get any coal from these hatches, it's just going to be delivered straight to the here, and these auto sweepers are going to automatically load our coal generators. So that ought to automate a lot of our coal production. If you will get a bigger shipping network set up, you can do something like this, whoops, where you set up some systems to then ship sandstone and sedimentary rock over to uh, these rooms so that you don't need to constantly run material back and forth to feed these hatches. So I could do something like, well, I guess I should just put them over here in the corners. Ah, cancel, there. So if you put them over in the corners here, I'll just run this one thing down to each of them. Something like this. And if we can split them evenly, that'd be ideal, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. There should be... If you're sweeping out the map, there should be tons to worry about anyway, so... Whatever. This isn't perfect, but I think you get the idea. Then you can start shipping all this automatically. Save your duplicates a lot of time to be spending on something else. So there you go. That's how you can stabilize your coal production in the long term. Let's talk about getting on a second source, like we alluded to, which is going to be our natural gas. So somewhere on your map, uh, this is the base game by the way, but this happens in Spaced Out too. You'll probably find something like this, which is a natural gas generator. Um, this is going to be a gigantic power source. It's one of the best things in the game. I'm going to show you how to take it so that you can uh, keep your power on and start scaling up to later game power options. So first of all, we're going to need a little bit of space to work with. Um, let's We could potentially find a space we're not really using. Mm -hmm. Nah, this doesn't really look good. Let's just, uh, let me just do this really quickly. Sandbox. Let's just delete a whole bunch of stuff and get it out of our way so that we can start creating an area for it. So we can hurry this up a little. There. So let's say we had cleaned out all this. Let me get rid of this water so it doesn't fall down. There we go. So let's say we had cleared out all this. Let's start creating an area for our natural gas, uh, at least a holding tank for it. So your natural gas is going to be need to be composed of two parts. One is going to be where the actual generators are. So I'm just going to create something like this. Also, uh, excuse the uh, use of cheats here. The natural gas area is just going to be a big area to hold um, all of your natural gas that you pump out. So I'm just going to create something really quickly. 
like this that has an entrance point. And it's just a big open area. Uh, it doesn't need to be entirely vacuumed out, but we will need to fill this with water to make a liquid lock. So I'll fill that up really quickly. Uh, water. There we go. Then, when we need to take our uh, natural gas geyser, the way that we're going to want to do it is... Let me turn off my cheats now so my duplicates actually have to do this. So, well, that's not what I wanted. If I were approaching this, you could just open this up and just start building around it if you want to. The problem is that it's going to be emitting natural gas that's very hot. You probably don't want to do that. That could cause a pretty big mess. So let's talk about how to get in there a different way. So I'm going to start building the same thing that we just did, which was a liquid lock to kind of lock up this area. And I'm going to build some stuff so my duplicates can actually get over there. This is also nice if you have suits for it, but it's not recommend. It's not... I mean, it's recommended, but it's not necessary. So if you have a way to do this without suits, that's totally fine. All I'm going to be doing is building a liquid lock here and then putting some pumps inside this that will pump down into a room, which is going to basically be like my holding tank for all my natural gas, which will then go to my actual generators. The generators may get hot. You might have to cool them. Um, that's a problem we'll worry about in a different video. But for right now, um, just know that that's definitely going to be something that you need to do. So my, as my duplicates get up here, um, I'm going to speed this up. Let's start building out our generators. And I'm going to use the cheats for this part, just so that we're going quickly. Uh, let's see. I do this on. There we go. Uh, let's start building out some generators. Now, they're going to build... They're going to produce some uh, waste products. So two of the waste products are going to be carbon dioxide, and another one is going to be polluted water. This is another reason why being dug out to the top of the map is very important. Uh, let me reveal a bunch of stuff here, by the way. Where am I looking for this? Here we go. Start revealing a bunch of the map. This is another reason why you're going to want to be dug to the top of the map, is so that if you have the exhaust from your natural gas generators, that you have a place to send it. So let's just do that now. I'll just put a door up at the top here just to make sure none of our oxygen gets out. And then just a gas vent and something like this. Mm, we're going to need two lines that are going to come up here, but whatever. No shame in being fast. And I'm also going to stop sending them into these tanks and just send out all the stuff that I have in the bottom of my base that I don't want out into space. We can just delete that. There. So, uh, the natural gas generators... Just going to create an area for all the polluted water to fall into. You can make this taller or shorter if you want to. It doesn't matter too much. Just going to create something like this. And then the actual natural gas generator is just going to set them up like that. This is probably overkill. You don't necessarily need this many, but it depends on what's available. If you have a lot of natural gas, you might as well have a lot of natural gas generators. Then I'm just going to put them into a room that looks kind of like this. Just kind of seal it off eventually. Down at the bottom, I'm probably going to want a pump, so I can put it there. And that is going to probably want to be on automation, so that we're not pumping out, like, a couple drops of water at a time. So maybe, like, only if we're over, like, 250 kilograms. Then the natural gas, like we said, is all going to get sent into here. So let's see what our duplicates would be doing up there. Uh, they're not going quickly, and that's because I gave them bad, bad directions. So once they get all that stuff done, uh, we'll, we'll get there. So the natural gas is eventually going to go into this room, which is sealed off by a liquid lock here. I'm going to set up a gas pump inside here, which is going to be made out of gold amalgam. You can use steel if you have it, but note that steel will be required for this part. So if you don't have a metal refinery for at least a little bit of steel, a couple places you can get it from is there's some right here. If you... Why is it not revealing those tiles? There's a door right here that's made out of steel that you can deconstruct up here in the space biome. There's also this, the Somnium Synthesizer. These doors are made out of steel. You can deconstruct those and get enough to make the pump that's inside here too. So those are a couple other options. Alright, so the natural gas room is going to look something like this. I'm going to want to put it on an Atmo sensor to make sure I'm only pumping it out if it's worthwhile. Just like the same, we don't want to pump out water if there's only like a couple drops. I don't want to pump out any air if there's barely anything worthwhile getting there. 
Now let's put this on a filter gate again. Uh, this one's not as necessary, actually. I just kind of like filter gates to make sure that it's actually okay to do what it wants to do. And the Atmos sensor that I want here, let's make sure to set this over like, oops, not 50, maybe like 500 grams. I'm going to put it in the middle of the room in case there was any other random gases in here. So like, you don't want to obviously pump oxygen or carbon dioxide or whatever into these machines. It'll damage them. Um, so if you build it in the middle of the room and you have just a little bit of gases in here and you use your Atmos sensor, you will always be drawing out natural gas because that's where it's going to settle. Drop a gas vent here to send the natural gas into and then out of this room and into here. You might want to use insulated pipe for all this because this natural gas can be quite hot. And your exhaust can be sent out into space as well. Kind of like drawing through natural tile here, so we'll get rid of it so it looks a little more normal. All right, duplicates are, well, I keep pausing, so they're not really making that much progress. All right, let's do this. Um, I will, let's just pretend there's duplicates here. Let me at least get this started. Get rid of this. Just gonna create myself a liquid lock here really quickly. And then if I mop, destroy it. Yes, okay. Fill this with water. I want a brush, actually. Not that big. There. So if I have something like this, now my duplicates can actually get in there without getting rid of any of the natural gas. So what I'm going to want to do, let me turn this off so my duplicates actually have to do the work like I've been hopefully talking about for a while. Once they get in here, I'm just going to put a steel pump, and this has to be made out of steel, otherwise this is going to get damaged by the uh, natural gas that comes out of here because it's too hot for any of the other materials. So once that's in there, um, I can also start lining the outside of these with insulated tile. So I could start just kind of building it out like this. Maybe put some tiles up here. Eventually I will seal all this entirely off like that. But I do need to make an opening for my duplicates to get into so that they can start working. Then, oh, I don't even have my insulated pipe research. I started way too early on this save. Hey, it's magic. We got it. Where's my insulated pipe? Here we go. All right. So you probably want to make this out of insulated pipe. I'm going to send this down, just straight down into where my natural gas is going to at least all be held. Just kind of down like that. There. Now it'll drop all the natural gas in here, and this will only get pumped out into my generators if we are above, I set this wrong, it needs to be above 500 grams. We'll hook this up to power, and then hook the rest up to heavy watt wire, because whenever we're generating power, we don't want that all to be going through the heavy watt wire. Or if you get really wild, there's a wire that's heavier than that, but I've never needed to use it before in like normal runs. Something like this. So yeah, um, duplicates ought to get up here pretty quickly. Let me prioritize this a little bit higher so they actually will get up here. But this liquid lock will make it so that they can work in here. We're also going to want to put this on an Atmos sensor as well because I don't want to pump this out if there's no reason to. So put that on an Atmos sensor. This one, we could just hook up directly. We don't necessarily need to put everything on a filter gate. We also will need some kind of power here. If you have conductive wire, it's nice to not have to recrack this open to change it out for a different wire type. So I'll usually like to run some conductive wire out like that, and then you can just connect it up to the lower level wires until they're all replaced with better ones. If you even get that far, it's not even necessary to, but it can be nice. Why was that running all the way up here? That's a weird place for a deoverizer. <laughs> All right, so let's do this. Let's take another quick editing break to let my duplicates catch up, and I'll be right back. All right, duplicates are done building everything. Let's seal this off and get it rolling. So uh, with your... Let me turn off my sandbox tools here. Make sure this is off. Yeah, okay. So all you're only going to need to do from this point is you can worry about these extra tiles of natural gas if you really care uh, by just kind of like crawling your walls in closer and closer over time. I'm just going to seal it off for right now and get this started. So our Atmos sensor, probably want to set this to above, say, I don't know, like 300. Then it's going to pump the natural gas down through this pipe that we set up. 
all the way down into our room that we have, which is basically our natural gas holding area. There's a couple ways you could do this a little bit more efficiently, and when you get plastic, you can overpressurize this a little bit more. But this is the simplest way to do it, uh, is just to kind of send it somewhere and keep a room that's large enough because this room will get overpressurized with natural gas really quickly. We want a way to alleviate that pressure and let it sit somewhere so we kind of have like a stockpile of natural gas. I guess you can't really pile gas, but you know what I mean. So there we go. Uh, it's all pumping out. Again, make sure this is made out of steel so that it doesn't uh, overheat so you don't have to crack this back open. And you shouldn't need to touch this for pretty much the rest of the game. This should be done. Uh, so it should just be providing natural gas for you. It'll get sent down here, and as soon as the pressure gets high enough, which we're pretty close to... Oh, I only said this is 300, or 500. Let's set it to 300. Yep, on our filter gate now. As soon as this gets ready, it'll pump it into your natural gas generators. You're going to want to also put these natural gas generators on smart batteries as well. You don't want to just have them running all the time. You only really want to have it running if there's a reason to have it running. So I'm going to throw a smart batteries down right next to it. Just run automation wire that connects all of them together. Make sure to connect the battery up to heavy watt wire. And uh, I'll get my duplicates to kind of rush over here and do this really quickly. In the meantime, it's going to be running constantly, but we don't necessarily need any power. You can already see our battery is full, so duplicates should shut this down here in just a second. Uh, but yeah, so like I mentioned also, you will need cooling on these things. They're going to produce a good amount of heat. Um, I'm not going to talk about this here. There's a bunch of ways that you can cool this. Uh, it's going to be some kind of liquid, but I'll have other videos to talk about that, or you can look at them in my walkthroughs and stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, the batteries that you're going to want to set up here, I'm probably going to want to use my natural gas before using my coal, only because natural gas is basically free. Like, this, just a matter of when this erupts. So if the natural gas is free and the coal is more limited, I'm going to want to use my natural gas more, which means I'm going to set my smart battery numbers to be higher than the smart batteries that I use for my coal. My coal is at 80-20. This smart battery is going to be at 90-30, which is basically going to mean that it's going to turn on sooner and stay on for longer. So there you go. Uh, that's pretty much the whole setup for natural gas. There's a whole bunch of other power types that I'm not going to cover within the scope of this video. I'm just going to cover like the main checkpoints that you'll need to get to for sustainable power that are reliably available on pretty much every map. So let's talk about the last one here really quickly. Okay, let's get angry. All right, so like I mentioned, geothermal power is what we're going to be looking for. So let's dig to the bottom really quickly. Down at the bottom of the map on the starting asteroid in the base game and the starting asteroid in Spaced Out, you're going to get a big pile, I don't keep saying pile, a big pool of lava down here. And this lava looks really scary, and it is scary to be fair. But you should also look at this as an opportunity to generate a lot of energy off of it. For this section, because we're so far away from the center of our base, I'm not going to wait for my duplicates to get all the way down here because this will take forever. So I'm just going to kind of fast forward and build this out really quickly so you can see the idea. Instead of us having to wait, it'll literally take them like 30 or 40 cycles to build all this. So let me just uh, get through this really quickly. I'll talk about this in more detail in another video, and there's also some of my walkthroughs that'll be coming up, so, uh, yeah. Anyway, so, let me just destroy some tiles here to get it out of the way. You're gonna basically want to get down into this biome. You will need suits and stuff like that for your duplicates, but eventually you're just gonna want to dig all this out. Let me pause really quickly. You're gonna want to dig all this out, but keep the abyssalite here, because the abyssalite is gonna be pretty important for how we set everything up. Destroyed the oil well. Oh well. Alright. So assuming we clear out an area near the lava that looks pretty good. Maybe something like this. It could be a little bit larger if we really wanted it to be. It's also going to take me a little bit longer because I have to kind of like carve around the abyssalite. Let's do this instead actually. Fill. Vacuum. There. There. Uh, uh. Close enough? Okay, close enough. Sure. Okay, so let's say we have something like this. Ugh, stupid oil. Get out of here. You will want this to be entirely cleaned out by the time you get started. So, 
now that we're at the point where we can start build come on this is such a struggle okay there we go now that we're at the point where we have everything pretty much cleared out and we have connection with the abyssalite what you're going to want to do is start building some stuff out of metal tiles and ideally out of uh, tungsten if you have it available so the metal tiles are going to start at the point that's like the highest on the abyssalite without starting to carve through so i'm going to build some tiles that look like this then on one side i'm going to build an igneous rock or Ideally ceramic, if you have it available by this point, is better. So let's just say we build it out of ceramic. And also on this side. Again, all this stuff needs to be empty. We need nothing but a vacuum in here. So I'm going to just use my cheats again to get this all vacuumed out. There. We want absolutely nothing in here. This layer is going to be eventually what we connect down to the magma, but there's a couple other things that we need to do first. So first of all, let me get rid of this oil. Whoops. There we go. And you want to clean out any materials from here too. So if there's any materials on the ground, you want to get rid of that as well. Because that could definitely mess up the uh, setup here. So on one side of this, you're going to need duplicates to come in here and actually work. So uh, I'm going to set up a little bit of a liquid lock here once again. It's going to look something like that. And then once we're in here, this is what's going to be connecting up to another point to start heating up uh, some water. So we're going to use some mechanized airlocks made out of uh, wolframite because they can take a lot of abuse in terms of heat. And um, it's fairly available on the map. There's not a tremendous amount on most starting maps, but it is still reasonably available. If you don't have enough, you can use iron sometimes. Um, and you can use steel, but you need to be kind of careful. Steel is just expensive, but iron is a little bit close to the melting temperature of magma, so not always the safest thing. On top of these steel doors, or not steel doors, on top of the wolframite doors, we're going to put another layer of tungsten that looks like this. Looks like we're getting a little bit too close here, so let me back this off a little. Deconstruct, eh, might as well just destroy it. Down. There. Then if we take ceramic and we build up the side here, we're going to create a little bit of an area for all of our water. And this is going to be what is going to conduct uh, energy up into our steam turbines that will generate the energy for us. Again, this all has to be vacuum, so make sure you clean this out the best you can. I'm going to set up an automation wire, again made out of tungsten, that's going to connect to all of these doors. And this is going to be what's going to control whether we get heat from the magma or not. This will start making a lot more sense as we go, but this is a pretty big build. We're going to want to put this on an ore gate, and this ore gate is going to be connected to a couple things. For one, it's just going to be connected to a manual switch, just in case we need to come down and do stuff with our duplicates down here. And you'll notice if I turn this on, it opens the doors. If there is only vacuum here, which let's set this up now... If there's only vacuum here, then the only thing that's going to be capable of conducting heat from these bottom tiles to these top tiles is going to be those doors. So as long as the doors are open, there will be no heat conducted. If the doors are closed, then the heat from the magma can travel through these tiles and up into the water. Let's brush in some water here really quickly. There, That's probably overkill, actually. Let me delete a couple of these. There we go, resting at about 800, 900 kilograms per tile. That's pretty good. Uh, you want a reasonable amount of water in here, I would say. Then on top of that, like I mentioned, we're gonna want a good amount of steam turbines. Um, you can do quite a bit here. I usually do about six. It looks like we're pretty close to that now. So yeah, there you go. You will need a way to cool these steam turbines, by the way. Um, here's a way that I like to do it. So this is all vacuum in here too. You will want to make sure you vacuum all this stuff out. So if you need like gas pumps or whatever to vacuum this out, you can definitely do that. By the way, let me create our liquid lock here. I like to create this liquid lock out of oil only because it's available down here. And um, it's going to stand up to a lot more temperature changes. There shouldn't be much temperature exchange here, but there might be some on the outside. If you have water here, it might start to boil. That can be annoying. All right. So with these, let's set up our ceramic tiles that are going to encase all this, but we still do need to cool these uh, 
steam turbines down. So ideally, I would flood this with some kind of gas. Um, if you can get your hands on hydrogen, that would be good. But if not, then uh, oxygen in a good concentration is totally fine. So I'm going to say maybe 10 kilograms per tile of oxygen in here. And then the cooling mechanism, we can just have it on its own setup down here. So I'm going to grab a couple of aqua tuners. I'm going to put them down like that. And then one tank for water, a liquid reservoir right there. This is going to be filled with polluted water and we're going to create just a very simple loop uh, for cooling inside here. Let me actually make this ceiling a little bit higher. I don't like how low that is. And destroy. There we go. Paint in our oxygen again. There we go. So uh, if you have something set up like this, the loop or the material that you're going to want to put in here is going to be some kind of polluted water. So I'm just going to use our cheats to pump in some polluted water here really quickly. There we go. Oh, not regular water. We do not want that. Uh, we'll get this fixed. Deconstruct. There we go. Change this to polluted water. There we go. Once we fill this up, this is going to be what's going to distribute it all around this area. Um, you can use radiant pipe in here if you want to, um, if you have enough. It can be a little bit hard to come by, but it is ideal. So I'm going to set up a line of just regular pipe that goes. And then over the top of every one of these machines, I'll just put in some radiant pipe like this. Obviously, I'm leaving space so that the steam turbines can send stuff down like that. And then the liquid pipe can just connect up to the radiant pipe, and then you can just use bridges to jump over each one. This ought to keep this area pretty cool, but we still do need to connect it down to the aqua tuners. So at the end of all this chain, I'm just going to connect it up to a bridge. And then on that bridge, I'm going to set up a pipe that goes straight over into the input. We're going to wait until this is all filled up before... Well, I guess it doesn't matter. We'll just do this now. Then, before that, I'm going to put... A liquid shutoff. This liquid shutoff is going to be, if the polluted water in here is too hot, it's going to cycle it down into these aqua tuners. So I'm going to make these out of ceramic as well. Just kind of lead one into the other. Then I'm going to send it back up here, but I'm going to connect it onto the output of the bridge. This is going to make it so that if there's stuff in the bridge that are stuff that's supposed to come over the bridge, it's going to be forced to wait until these pipes are clear. Uh, this will make sure that you set up the whole loop together uh, so that it'll prioritize stuff coming back from the aqua tuner rather than stuff coming through the cooling loop. So if you do this, set it up with some automation wire on the tile before. I will probably want to cool this polluted water if it's above like 20C. Uh, you still want to keep enough room so that it doesn't freeze the pipes and break them or whatever. Let's also set up uh, our power systems for this really quickly. We're going to need two because there are two aqua tuners. Run each one down like this. And then our heavy watt wire. Just going to be connected into our steam turbines. We're also going to want to connect this up to a smart battery. There's no reason to run these steam turbines unless there is a power need. So connect these up here. There we go. And let me get this all connected to the rest of our base here. Uh, yeah, we'll leave a, we'll obviously need to live a bit, leave some abyssalite there. And then we'll just draw some insulated tile. Well, we didn't, we actually have a liquid lock here, so this is really not very precise. But I think you get the idea. There, something like this. Dig this out, destroy. And then paint in some water. There. So now we can draw... Oh, what the... Now we can draw our heavy watt wire all the way down and connect it up to our system. Which, again, is just such a pain if you have to do it quickly. Destroy this. Whoops. Whatever. Misclick. 
We'll leave it there. The xylophone all the way down up to here. He's. Oh, I hate these. Just they would go away. All right. So now that we have everything hooked up, I'm gonna set my steam or my my steam turbine, my smart battery, to be on the same numbers that I did with my natural gas because this is basically free energy. Like this is not technically renewable, but this will last so long that you can leave it running for such an incredibly long time. Uh, let's see. We need to mop the floor. There we go. Okay, there's a couple other pieces that we need to do here. One is I forgot the liquid vents to actually send this water back into here from the steam turbines. Secondly, we need to set up automation to send to let the uh, doors know when it's okay to close. So what I like to do is set up a thermo sensor, which is just to make sure that the steam is not getting too hot. There's a point at which these things will max out in terms of efficiency. We want to kind of keep it around those numbers. So if this is anywhere above, let's say like 175 C, I don't know exactly what it is. It's somewhere in that range. If it's above 175, I want the doors to open. I'm going to also put this on an OR gate. And this is because I want to also set this up on a timer sensor. The timer sensor is just going to make sure that those doors don't stay closed for a really long time. Um, if you do not put this on a timer sensor, you can leave yourself vulnerable to overheating this whole setup. We definitely don't want to do that. So I'm going to set our timer sensor to something like green duration of, I don't know, 10 seconds and the red to maybe like 20 or 30. Let's say 30. Sure, why not? And we have this set up to above 175 and the manual override. So if the manual override is on, if the timer sensor is in green, or if the water or steam in here is too hot, then the doors will open. In all other cases, they will close. And that's good. Um, but that's how we want to conduct the temperature from one to the other. Now, of course, you might be looking at this and being like, uh, there's nothing happening, nothing is connected. And that's because we need to do one more thing. The one more thing we need to do is we need to actually connect points down into the lava. This is excessive. You probably wouldn't necessarily do this many, but I just want to do it for a demonstration. So if you draw these tungsten tiles down here, and the tungsten is very important, just kind of draw them down to where they're going to start touching the lava. And then out of obsidian, build some ladders that kind of go down like this. So if you draw enough connection points down into the lava, which again, this is going to take quite a bit of tungsten or steel or whatever you have available. Just make sure you're not using a metal that's going to melt by touching the lava. There, something like this. I'll build out the uh, ladders. Let me get rid of all the abyss light that's in the way. Oh, forgot some. Oh, I forgot more. Jeez, what is this? What is this? All right, now that those are touching the magma, you can see those metal tiles heat up really quickly. Um, and the only thing that we need to do now is to turn off the manual override so that these will eventually close and it'll exchange temperatures with everything up here. Oh, I forgot to run an automation wire with the smart battery. There we go. So uh, let's make sure to disconnect this so that we can hook up the rest of our cooling loop. We will deconstruct this, hook it up like that, there. Now our cooling loop, um, before I get all this stuff running, let's just make sure our cooling loop is good. So the cooling loop is gonna head down here, it'll turn around, go over all the machines, it'll go through the bridge, up to here, and then if it is hotter than 20C, which it is, it'll run down to the aqua tuners, come back up, and back into the uh, point to be reevaluated. So here you go, you can kind of see all this stuff in action passes through both of them and then this gets held up because of the style of building on the uh, pipes right here this will keep everything cold enough to keep this cooling loop up and running and it'll kind of be self-sufficient all right let's turn off our manual override once these connect you can see oh, the timer sensor you can uh, see that the metal tiles will heat up quite quickly here which should start imparting all of this temperature into the water which might take a little bit to, to boil. I think I always do this, and every single time I talk about this, I'm like, oh, it's gonna happen so fast, but then you actually watch it and it takes a little while, but it feels fast. Let's do this to speed it up a, a bit. 
We sample this water. Let's raise the temperature up to, I guess, about as high as it should be able to go before it starts to boil. Then I'll fill this. This will be as if we just heated up the water a bunch more. So once we finally get close, um, this should stay... Yep, there we go. It's going to start turning into steam. And then once the steam gets hot enough, all of your generators are going to start turning on. And as long as it's connected to these tiles, all this stuff is going to continue to heat up. Let's simulate as if we had already gotten that far. Let me fill this up with steam that's a little bit hotter. And we want this to sit at about like 175. So I'm going to set up to 172. There we go. All the steam turbines are going to turn on. And again, this is only going to be when we need power. So if we don't need power, it's not going to run. But this is so strong. Every single one of these is going to be running. They're almost at full power right now. The steam could be a little bit hotter. But once they're at full power, each one of them is going to put out 850 watts. Which is ridiculous to if you're getting it basically for free down here. So that is basically the whole setup. Uh, you can kind of tune these numbers a little bit. And if your duplicates need to come in here and extend these ladders down... That's why I built this way, so that they could continue to dig down here and extend further in if this uh, starts to harden. Because once this cools down, it will start to harden into just straight up rock. It still should keep this hot for a long time, but if you need to, you can continue to build further and further down into the lava. Up to you, but this will keep you running and keep you powered for kind of a long time. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. There's a lot of other power solutions that there are. I'm not going to mention them in these videos, only because I consider those ones like the core ones. You could run your game for pretty much endlessly on coal, natural gas, and some form of geothermal power for pretty much the whole game. They're fairly simple. I know the geothermal seemed like a lot, and that's because it's the mad scientist build. It's got to be a lot, but yeah. Okay, long video here. Thanks for sticking through it. I appreciate it. I'll see you back for more videos here really soon. Thanks for watching and take care.